Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Like MRI, and this is a 53-year-old male with complaints of non-specific back pain. He saw his chiropractor, and they sent him on to get an MRI because the symptoms were very severe. And on this view, we see a T1 view on the left, where marrow should be bright. Instead, we see this splotchy area of heterogeneous, mostly low signal in the marrow. Also, there's a little scalloping of the inferior end plate of L3. And I put some arrows on that. You can see this funny gray tissue along the front. Looks like it scallops the front of the vertebral body. And the spinal canal looks like it's narrowed here. The spinal canal is here, and it looks like it tapers down and gets pretty narrow in here. So the diffusely infiltrative process with unusual areas of darkness that could be edema or bone sclerosis or a combination of them um, in the L3 vertebral segment. This is a T2 way to view. Usually uh, marrow is like this, uh, intermediate to bright, and then any edema should be bright. This is dark, which is a little bit unusual. And if we put a base stir sequence, which is really sensitive for marrow changes, we can see that this is abnormal, mostly bright. We see some scalloping, scalloping of the inferior end plate. We see the spinal canal is very narrow. There's a uh, process along the back margin here of the vertebral body, the soft tissue component. It pokes backwards into the spinal canal. Instead of being nice and wide open, it tapers. It causes a moderate or moderate to severe stenosis at this level. Now if we roll off to the right side, we see the right psoas muscle here. It has uh, inflammation or edema all throughout it, and there's even a little band of more localized fluid or inflammation right here. So it looks like this may be an infectious process because of the paraspinal component and involvement of that psoas muscle. But when we see a diffusely involved vertebral segment like this, we think first of a cancer. Is this a metastatic lesion that has a developing pathologic fracture here with a soft tissue component? They can look very, very similar. Um, but in this case, the uh, paravertebral component is very circumferential. We don't really see any bone expansion and the margins of the bone are pretty well defined. Also, it goes into the psoas muscle here, and the psoas muscle has this little tubular fluid collection here, it looks like. So this may be a phlegmon, uh, paraspinal phlegmon, that again involves the psoas, and now maybe a little developing psoas abscess here on the right side, right there. Because this is so dark, um, this may be uh, related to more of a acute upon chronic infection. Sometimes they can have TB or fungal infection that can be uh, more slow uh, growing or not as fulminant or active. And so that can cause this uh, more of a chronic appearance with reactive bone sclerosis. And there's not too much in the way of uh, bone destruction. An acute bacterial infection we might think it would be more bright on the T28 images. And maybe the soft tissue component would be even more uh, prominent or fulminant. And so this is, again, probably osteomyelitis rather than bone tumor, even though they can be very hard to tell. And it could be related to TB or fungus, or possibly a bacterial infection, but it looks like there may be some chronic component of it as well. And that's it. Thank you very much.